I'm shares of Twitter soaring today by now. You know that. Elon Musk reviving his bid to buy that company for his original offer price of $54.20 a share. Let's bring in platform editor and CNBC contributor Casey Newton. It's good to have you back. Could think of nobody else I'd rather have on this since you've, you've been with dancing with us the whole entire time. Did you have this on your scorecard? No, but I mean, if there's one thing we've learned from this whole situation, it's uh, never assume that you know what is going to happen next. You think this is it? I mean, do, do you believe this is it? And you know why I'm asking you that question. Sure. And I mean, no, look, I mean, the truth is, you know, my brain is already playing four dimensional chess. You know, it's like, what yeah. is Elon's real game here? The whole thing sort of feels like a trap, right? Because keep in mind, he's saying that I'll go ahead and uh, and buy you for 44 billion, but you have to uh, make this trial go away as a precondition of me settling. That seems like a really weird thing to ask, right? So if I were Twitter lawyers, I'd have a lot of questions right now. Yeah, no question. Uh, speaking of questions, former people who were at, at Twitter, I did speak to the former CEO, Dick Costolo, uh, a little bit earlier, and he sent me a comment that I want you to react to, okay? Quote, sure. I always think about the team there. There are clearly a bunch of deal winners and losers today, but this isn't the end for the team. It's the beginning of more uncertainty. What do you make of that from Dick Costolo, who knows this company as, as well as anybody? Dick is absolutely right. It is the beginning of uncertainty for, for those employees who have already been through so much this year. But I would also argue it's the beginning of uncertainty for everyone involved in this deal, right? Even if you're Parag Agarwal, it's not like you know what's going to happen next. So there's still a lot of question marks and a lot of chaos to come for everyone involved. An another former, uh, let's say, Twitter insider, I don't want to reveal the name of this person, uh, texted me, will be fascinating to see what happens with Twitter now. Elon has shown he had no idea what he was getting into. In light of that, what is he getting into? W what, what happens from here and what needs to happen? Well, we're still waiting to hear anything from Elon Musk about what changes mind. Like, keep in mind, as recently as yesterday, his lawyers are in court saying, well, the company has too many bots and too many security issues. It's a national security threat. And now all of a sudden he wants to buy the whole thing. So, you know, if you were to take him at his word, which I don't, you might expect that he's going to spend his, you know, tenure as uh, the head of Twitter, getting rid of all the bots and, and fixing all of those security problems while also somehow making it into a much more profitable company. But frankly, all of those things sound like pipe dreams, given how much legal red tape there is to clear up in the meantime. I hear you. But how do they make it into a more profitable company? At the end of the day, that, that's what he needs to figure out how to do. Well, what's the key? Yeah, well, if you look at the note that he sent to his bankers when he was trying to raise private equity, there were a lot of ideas in there about uh, dramatically increasing the number of paid subscribers to Twitter, selling more premium features, that sort of thing. But it was basically at the level of thinking of written on the back of a cocktail napkin, right? Not a lot of a sophisticated financial modeling in there. So, um, you know, it's really anyone's guess. So I've got to believe he's if this does in fact happen, he's not going to be the CEO. I mean, he's got, he's got like 45 other jobs, uh, as capable as he is in, in, in many of them. Who's the right guy or gal? Who, who's the right person to lead this company? Because presumably one would think that Parag may not be uh, in for the long haul based on the back and forth that, that they've already had through this uh, arduous process. Who, who's a name out there that you have? Oh, I, I mean, we, we know that there's only one sort of person who gets this job in Eli and, and Elon's empire, and it's a yes person, right? So there are plenty of people out there that would love to come in and, you know, do some great things for, for Twitter. But, you know, the reality is that this person is almost certainly going to be somebody who can do Elon's bidding, will put up with his whims, you know, changing every few weeks as to what is the new priority. So, you know, who is that person? Maybe somebody else who's already in one of his, in, uh, his organizations. What do you think it means for users? Do you think they gain users or lose them? Um, you know, I, I don't know. I think everything in social media right now is kind of flat-ish, except for maybe TikTok. So I think Twitter's user base is still going to kind of hum along mostly flat. Um, you know, the question has been, whoever is the CEO of Twitter, can they do something that's going to go out and find those next few hundred million users? It was a really tall order when Jack Dorsey was CEO, and it will be a really tall order for Elon Musk or whoever comes next.